You know, ladies and gentlemen, the era of the speed demons of the 1970s has long passed, but this guy who stole 300 total bases in Major League Baseball over a prestigious career really knew how to steal a base and unfortunately sometimes got caught while doing it. So today we're talking about the person who should have been a two-time world champion with Pittsburgh, but factors played against him. One time he wasn't put on the uh, 71 roster, another time he was traded before the We Are Family Pirates won in 79. Of course, we're talking about the great Franklin Cristomo Tavares Fabien, or better known as Frank Tavares. Now, the Major League shortstop uh, played with Pittsburgh, New York, and Montreal from 71-82. Montreal tried him at second base as a as a sequel to Rodney uh, Coolbreeze Scott, but it never worked out. Now, born December 24th, 49, in La Matas de Santa Cruz, Dominican Republic. The be batter right and through right. He signed as an amateur free agent in 68 and made his Major League debut in September of 71 as a pinch runner for Willie Stargell in a 2-1 bottom of the 15th loss to the Mets. He came in in the 15th inning. After only four appearances, mostly as a leading in defensive replacement in 72 and spending the entire 73 season in the minors, he made the Pirates for good in 74. Now on August 5, 1977, in one of the most exciting moments of that decade, he hit an inside the park grand slam in the second inning of the second game of a doubleheader at Cincinnati. That year, he led the NL in stolen bases with 70, but followed that with leading the NL in time Scott stealing with 25 and 78. Now, like I said, in a fortunate set of circumstances, he was not giving a World Series ring in 71 after Pirates, Pirates won because he was not listed on any postseason roster. He also didn't receive a World Series ring when the Pirates won in 79 because he was traded just weeks in the season uh, to the Mets. I think he should have been given an honorary one. Now, when he moved on to the Mets, he kept on his base stealing. Now, with Montreal, uh, later on, we'll get into, but uh, with the Mets, the trade was from Tim Foley, and we all know Tim Foley did very well in Pittsburgh's championship run that year. Now, during his first season with the Mets, he hit his only career home run over the fence against the great Mike Lacoste. Coincidentally, he too was in Cincinnati. Now, he played in a record 164 games that year from New York because of rainouts and other uh, factors. Now, with the Expos, he was traded with pitcher Steve Ratzer prior to the 82 season. Now, Montreal tried him at second base because with Dave Cash no longer there and Rodney Scott not really doing much with the bat, he tried him, but unfortunately he didn't work out. He only had a 161 batting average in 48 games. Now, Tavares ended his career with Montreal, even though he was still beloved quite a bit uh, for the Expos. The Expos fans wished the best for us because as an NL East rival, he knew what he did with Pittsburgh and New York against Montreal. He stole a ton of bases. So, one of the few players to have 300 stolen bases, uh, pretty well all in the 19... Uh, uh, 70s, and again, those that uh, that 70 stolen bases is a tremendous number. One of the few players ever to steal more than 70 bases in a major league season. So that's the story of the great, great Frank Tavares. If you like what we're doing here with our Ventures MLB podcast, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, we take requests. Requests are greatly considered and greatly appreciated. Have a nice day. Bye.